I asked over 100 data science leaders and hiring managers, does your data science team utilize SQL? 97% said yes, 97%. This is resounding, it's emphatic, colossal, it's astronomical. Whatever you wanna call it, if you wanna work in data science or analytics, it is a must have skill. So let's take a look at what SQL actually is, what it can do, some really basic code syntax for common tasks, and stick around until the end of the video as I've got a free downloadable PDF document for you with 10 commonly asked SQL theory questions with answers that will help you prepare for interviews. Alright, not a moment to waste, let's dive right in and I'm going to start by saying that SQL stands for Structured Query Language and in terms of its name you may have heard it being referred to as SQL as well as SQL. These are both commonly used names and I know I just use them interchangeably and no doubt I will do so without realizing throughout this video. SQL is one of the easiest programming languages to pick up due to the clarity and almost common sense nature of the commands. You can almost think of them as being very close to how a human might actually ask for something to happen. And you'll see what I mean when we take a look at some example code in a minute or two. In data science and analytics, we most often use SQL to store, extract, and manipulate data that is stored in tables or databases. And with SQL, we are specifically working with a type of database known as a relational database. So what exactly is that? Well, a relational database is simply a collection of tabular data sets. So think columns and rows that relate to each other through shared columns. Now, technically speaking, this is all actually based upon the mathematical theory of relations, but unless you are designing the database structures themselves, you really only need to know what is on screen here. So let's take a closer look at what I mean. Here, you can see a super simple example where we have a database that contains two very small tables. The one on the left is called populations, and this contains a column with country name and a column showing the population for that country. On the right we see another table which is called max temps and this also contains a country column and in this table we have a second column containing the record maximum temperature for each of those countries. Now we could manipulate data within each of these tables in isolation but we could also join them via the shared country column and this would allow us to do some much more interesting things. In reality a database could contain hundreds of tables and each table might contain millions or billions of rows of data. For now, let's not worry too much about that. Let's just keep learning about relational databases themselves. And as you progress in your career, you might come across the acronym RDBMS, which stands for Relational Database Management System. And this is the software that allows us to create and access a relational database and execute commands and queries on the data within it. It's essentially what gives us the ability to play with the data contained within our specific database. And speaking of playing with data, let's talk a little bit more about what we can do with it. And well, crud. And while this might seem like a slightly informal acronym, it's actually a really, really good way to describe the core functions or operations that can be performed on a relational database. C stands for create. So creating databases, creating schemas, which are almost like a partitioned area to help keep things organized, and of course, creating tables themselves. R stands for read, and this is mainly about querying the data. So essentially grabbing the relevant rows and columns from tables that will provide us with the information that we need. U is for update, which covers the fact that we can add more rows and columns to tables that already exist, as well as modify records within tables. And finally, D for delete. And this is kind of what you'd expect. We can delete specific rows and columns, or we can delete whole tables, schemas, and even databases. So while all of these processes can be done using SQL, will you, as a data scientist or data analyst, be expected to be well-versed in all of it? 
Most likely no. Data scientists and data analysts will typically spend most of their time in this read area. In a lot of companies, the management of the databases themselves, so the create, update, and delete functions are often taken care of by a specific database team or by data engineers. In saying that, however, a great data scientist or analyst should have an understanding of how the data they're using is being imported and created, as well as how it's being managed and changed over time. So knowing at least the fundamentals of these other functions can be very useful. So what are the common SQL tasks that data scientists and analysts are undertaking in business? Firstly, you'll often be using SQL for querying and exploring data and specifically doing so in order to extract useful business insights. Trying to distill customer behaviors, trends, or patterns that will make an impact on the business seldom come from an opinion or an idea. These are data-driven insights which can only come from exploring the data. You'll often find that managers or stakeholders will have theories around which customers are driving certain business metrics and the only way to confirm, deny, or refine these is to ask the data. In many cases, a simple SQL query can have a huge impact on a business, providing key evidence for strategic decisions. Next, you're often going to be using SQL to gather and aggregate data for business reporting. This is very, very common. Every data science or analytics role that I've had has included some level of reporting based upon SQL queries. Next, at some point, you will find yourself using SQL to select data to be used for a specific treatment. In other words, selecting specific customers, users, or data points based on certain criteria. In many retail businesses, for example, you might select customers to either be sent a mailer or to be contacted to remind them of an offer or any other treatment the business needs to apply for a specific objective. This sort of task lends itself very well to SQL. And fourth, it is very common to see SQL used to extract data that will go on to be used for machine learning tasks or for other predictive modeling. So now you know a bit about what SQL is, what it can do, and why it is such an important skill to have in the field of data science, let's take a really quick look at what some SQL code might look like. And here on screen for illustrative purposes, I've got a player details data set over on the right containing six famous sports people. The table has four columns, first name, last name, sport, and net worth. And yes, this is all very, very simple here, but let's just say, for example's sake, that we are the owner of Rolex, and we're looking for a new spokesperson for our very elite and expensive range of watches. So from from our data set, we want to create a short list and we decide that we only want to extract the names of sports people who are worth over $250 million as we only want the wealthiest of athletes representing our product. So what would the SQL query that would do this for us look like? Well, it would look something like this here on the left. Let's break down what is going on here. At the very top, we have the select statement. And this is where we specify which columns from the original data set that we want returned. Since we initially said that we only wanted the names of the sports people, underneath the select statement we have specified the two name columns, first name and last name. And you'll also notice that we've listed these out with a comma separating them. We can list out as many columns as we want here, they just need to exist in the table that we're querying. And we could even just put in an asterisk to ask for all columns to be returned. Next in our query we have the from statement, and this is where we specify the name of the table or data set that we want to find the data in. Here, we're saying, please go and search for those specified columns of data in the player details table. After this, you can see we have the where statement. And this is where we essentially apply any filters to our request at a row level. The only requirement we had in our very simple example was that the sports people needed to have a net worth greater than $250 million. And this is where we would apply that rule. So to start from the very top of the query and read through it, we are essentially saying, can you please return data from the first name and last name columns, which you will find in the player details table, but please, can you only return rows to me where the values in the net worth column are greater than 250 million? And after putting in the required semicolon at the end of our query to tell the system that this is the end of that particular request, we could hit run and we should be returned this 
output here, which is our shortlist of potential spokespeople for our new range of Rolex watches. And what I've just covered there is the real basis of SQL coding. It's all very intuitive. You can almost see the request in terms of the natural language that we might use if asking for something from another person. Like I said earlier, this is a very simple query. There is much, much more flexibility with SQL that means we can do a whole lot more in terms of processing and manipulating our data. We can do things like find unique values in our data using the distinct statement. Like I mentioned earlier, we can join multiple tables of data together based on a shared column or columns. Not all data can or will be held in one giant table, so this is really, really useful. And there are even many different types of joins, such as left join, right join, inner join, full join, and cross join, which help us get different results depending on exactly what we need. And you can see a somewhat useful, somewhat terrifying visualization of these using my face here on screen. Moving on from that, before I give you all nightmares, we can also aggregate or summarize data we have in our tables using a combination of the group by statement as well as something like sum, meaning that if we were a grocery store chain for example, we could look to sum up sales by product or product area or week or store or even a combination of those. We can do things like order our data using a simple statement like order by. We can append multiple portions of data together using statements such as union and union all. Something really clever we can do is apply conditional logic using the case when statement. So we could actually create ourselves a new column, name it whatever we want, and base the values for that new column on some defined logic. So again, perhaps we are a grocery store chain and we have a table with total sales per store. We could create a new column that categorized each store as either being a high sales store, a medium sales store, or a low sales store. This can come in really, really handy. We can also apply some really clever logic to sets of rows within our table using what are known as window functions. Applying the lag function for example, we could create a new column and input a value from the previous row in our data, meaning we could calculate the difference between the two. So perhaps we have a table of data that has sales by week and we want to calculate the change in sales week on week over time. This would be one way for us to achieve that. And the logic provided by window functions can be so so powerful once you get used to how it works. And while I've just listed some of the key things to know here, there is much, much more. But what you see here, if you were to master that, you could add some serious business value. So this is a great template to start with. All right, there you go, a high level introduction to SQL for data science. Now, if you are looking to learn SQL, then do go and take a look at my program, Data Science Infinity. It is the ultimate way to learn the skills that hiring managers actually need and want while getting unlimited and dedicated guidance, support, and mentorship along the way to ensure that you reach your goals and land an amazing role in this very, very exciting field. Now, I mentioned at the start of this video that I had have a free downloadable PDF document for you with 10 commonly asked SQL theory questions with answers. SQL tests are extremely common in data science and data analyst interviews, so this is going to help you feel confident going into those. This has been 5 Minute Data Science, and I will see you in the next video.